Hello, and welcome to episode 55 of Moms with Yarn. My name is Sharon. On Ravelry, I'm known as Bronx Knitter One, and on Instagram, I'm known as Bronx Knitter. Welcome! There's also a blog page, which is www dot bronxknitter dot blogspot dot com where you find little bits and pieces of things that I talk about in the podcast maybe some other things because it is a blog I can write it over time so that's a good thing about blogging um, you can also find me in our Ravelry group which is called Moms with Yarn which you don't have to be a mom to join so don't feel intimidated by the name I don't know. I have to think about that. Maybe I'll change the name. Maybe if it's easier for people to join so they don't want to look funny joining a mom's group or something. But we'll see. Anyway, it's Moms with Yarn on our Ravelry group. Join us. We have a, ca a cal going on right now. It's called Buy the Book. And what the, you do is find a book or a pattern or a pamphlet or go to your Ravelry library and knit something from it because you know that you've accumulated patterns that you intend to knit and never got to. So the Cal started January 1st and it ends March 15th. So if you make something kind of small, you can probably uh, finish it in a couple of weeks. If you have a book that has something in it that you want to make, that might be a good idea. Um, and it'll also help you to stash down, which takes me to my next, the cow that I'm participating in is the 2017 stash reduction, 2017 biggest loser stash reduction challenge, which is hosted by Deb and Sheila of the Never Cast Off podcast and Benita of the Fiber Pusher podcast. Now you must be a member of the group to join and I did and you can hold the spot or you can just go ahead and list what you've knit in the never cast off podcast group and you have to wait because they're counting grams not yards so uh, I entered in January in the fiber pusher podcast in February in the never cast off podcast and March this month will go back to the fiber pusher because they're alternating months so that's what I'm participating in that's one of the ones but I'm also participating in Brownberry Chronicles I believe it's a year-long cow where you make whips not waste and the hashtag is hashtag make whips not waste so I um, I'm using up my scraps because I have scraps that are this big. This is like half a skein of yarn and it's sitting around. I have a bunch of these in a bunch of different colors and they're not enough to make a pair of socks, not even a pair of shorty socks. So I'm using them up. So I'll tell you what that is when I get to it. But let's talk about what I've done so far. So, let me do the spinning first because hats are easier. I spun up some abstract fiber, 100% BFL in the Hopworks colorway, and it ended up being 151 yards of a three ply. So, it came pretty good. It was nice and springy. I, I loved the color. I loved spinning it. It was a joy. BFL is my favorite fiber to spin. And so when I got finished spinning it, I made the bank head hat, which is by Susie Gourlay. And it's a free pattern. I used a US Four, which is a 3.25 millimeter and this is the hat and I love the way the hat kind of striped I love the way the hat finished and this hat's not for me but oh my gosh so 
I usually wear my hair, my hats back a ways. So you get a little slouch. And when it's really cold, I pull it down. And if it's extra cold, I cuff my hat. And this hat is so, it's striped so perfectly. It came out so perfect. I wish I was keeping it, but I have other hand spun yarn that I can use to make myself a hat if that's what I want. So I love this hat. I want this hat. It was easy. It was free. It was, it's perfect in this color. And it's also going to be a gift. So that's the bank head hat. And in a three-ply worsted, it's pretty heavy, and it's perfect, a, a perfect gift. So it's going to go to its owner. So I also received the gift of a pattern from Simona. Thank you. And I used some of Juanita of She Spins LLC. You can find her on Ravelry, Instagram, um, Facebook, I believe. She's everywhere. But when I went to Rhinebeck, she gifted me this yarn. And it's her hand spun. It's three ply, Navajo plied. And it was 368 yards. I feel like this is alpaca and silk um I don't I have spun alpaca and silk before um it says alpaca wool but it's got to be mixed I feel like it's got to be mixed with something anyway this is the yarn it's beautiful it's lovely it's hand spun and Juanita if you go to she spins LLC you can find her shop she has an Etsy store and she's selling her mystery hand spun for $15 a skein so that's not a bad price for hand spun yarn if you've ever gone shopping for hand spun you'll find that based on yardage and and what type of material was used the yarn can be quite pricey $15 a skein is a very deep 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 discount so what I did was I made the beeswax hat by Amy Vandelar. I used Juanita's mystery hand spun. I used a US 4 which is a 3.5 millimeter and this is the beeswax hat. Now I saw this pattern and I fell in love with it. And I watch um, Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel Speaks and she wears her beeswax hat a lot and I saw it and I was like oh I gotta have that hat and now I do thanks Simona the white pieces you see here are in the fabric there's quite a few of them that's why I think that this alpaca is mixed with something but I love this hat Oh my gosh, like I want all of my hats to be this, like this. Yeah, I love this hat. I love the color, I love the feel, I love everything. So this is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. But if you're fortunate enough to have friends like I have who will gift you stuff, this is the hat. I'm going to make it in another color. Um, it does not call for, um, I think it calls for a DK or a sport weight yarn, but I think you can pretty much make it in anything, but I really want just the pattern to pop. So, I'm going to make this hat again. I might make it in this color again, since I have so much of Juanita's yarn left over, that um, she might like a hat that color, so I'm going to work on that. Okay, so moving right along. I made three hats this month. Remember the spruce hat by the Vulgar Knitter? Okay, so um, I made a pair of socks 
which are absolutely replacement socks. I had knit Socks on a Plain by Laura Linneman, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I knit it several years ago. And I went into my room to find my sock and it looks like this. That's my original pair of socks. Now if this yarn had been eaten by bugs the strands wouldn't be loose and still attached. They would have chewed through it and there would be a hole. There is one it's crazy. So I think that the culprit is my favorite kitty and yours. I think she grabbed a hold of it and some people don't know this but my cat steals things. Mail, um, rubber frogs and lizards, um, some articles of clothing, and she piles them up and chews on them. She goes into her sneaky little hiding place and does little things that she knows she's not allowed to. And when I clean, I usually try to hunt and find where these spots are. Sometimes it's in the back of the closet. Sometimes it's under the sofa. Sometimes it's under my son's bed where she just takes the mail or a small skein of yarn or whatever. And she goes postal on those things and I think this might have been a casualty I think maybe she dug it out of the hamper I don't know what she did but anyway I had to make a replacement pair of socks so I used this Regia it's called P-A-I-R F-E-C-T Regia Perfect and the idea is that the outside of the skein has a yellow string. You pull past the yellow, you cast on with the color, and this colorway happens to be denim. And in when you finish knitting your sock, you pull the rest of the guts out until you come to the yellow string again, and then go past the yellow and cast on, and you'll get two perfectly matching socks. I got this sock yarn from a place called Happy Feet which is closing their brick and mortar store. So I, the instructions for how the yarn works is on the label, the, on the inside of the label. So I did what they said, unfortunately, I didn't do exactly what they said. Exactly what they said was, you whatever end you start knitting from, that's the end you have to knit all the way from. So I didn't do that. I made one sock from the inside. I pulled the yarn from the inside and the other sock I pulled from the outside. And as you can see, they are not a matching, perfectly matching pair. Of course, I don't care. Uh, nobody ever sees the top of your socks and nobody sees the inside of your shoe. So all anybody's going to see is that I'm wearing socks at all. So don't care. Reggie is a hard wearing sock. This sock was knit on a US 1 and they are my replacement socks for socks on a plane so they're right and left specific because there's a cable that goes around. I did a heel flap and gusset and I did the decreased toe and these socks are going to replace these socks and as soon as I find the other one, I'll dismantle the old socks. But um, socks on a plane, US 1, 2.25 millimeter, 72 stitches, like all of my socks. Mm, all that hat wearing. Um, like all of my socks. And these are coming off the needles. I'm, or, I'm sorry, off the blocker. And they're going straight into my sock drawer because they don't need to be blocked to go in the sock drawer. So that's that for them. And then, because I'm participating in the Make Whips Not Waste Cal, 
I made the fair the flower patch fair isle socks by Terry Morris it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry but I had one of those 2012 um, knitting calendars and it is these socks were part of that package there weren't any other patterns that I was overly in love with but make whips not waste is a very good idea for me because I have like I said a lot of scraps that I need to get rid of and I don't want to just make um, the crochet blankets and stuff like that I want to actually make stuff I'm going to use and I don't know if I'm going to use a crochet black uh, blanket and I'm certainly not going to use a mitered square blanket. So these are the Flower Patch Socks by Terry Morris. I used a US 1 2.25. The multicolor is Jojo Land Melody. And the white is Cascade Heritage Sock. I made a few modifications in that. I didn't do a Pico Hem. I didn't do the corrugated rib. I did do the heel stripe, but I didn't do the patterned heel turn. I did stripes for my gusset decreases. I did not make the recommended heel. I just carried the fair aisle pattern around. And then I made stripes on the toe to try to pull everything in. So these were... Um, I had a big ball of the Jojo Land Melody and a little ball of the white. And that little ball of the white made both socks. And I have another little ball of white that is about the same size. So I need to make another pair of something with it. Because the it's too big to just go to waste or to sit around. So these socks are... I adore them. I They were fast to make. They're warm, and uh, I, I, I would make them again. I would make them a hundred times because these socks are perfect. They were not hard to make. The instructions were clear, and if you have the 2012 daily knitting calendar. You can make them too, because really, if you've ever done stranded knitting, this is this would be a lot of work for somebody who's never done it, but you can make stranded work for you any which way you want to. And I have a pair of Fair Isle Made Easy socks, which one of the socks felted. So I these are going to be a replacement for those. And this is sock pair number four for 2017. So I am moving right along. And you can list your make whips not waste on Instagram with the hashtag, hashtag make whips not waste. Or you can go to the Brownberry Chronicles Ravelry group and you can post your stuff there as well. And now lastly... I had some leftover yarn as usual and this is a fairly small skein and this is a little bit of the this is Cascade Heritage sock in black this is leftover Gail's art sock blank they're both 75 25 superwash merino and nylon and I am making the Jewel Socks, which is a Fair Isle Diamond Pattern Sock. And it looks like this. So I purchased this pattern at um, a store. I think the pattern was five dollars and the instructions are all there but they are kind of poorly put together because you 
make the socks, you follow the instructions and you make the socks and the next instruction is to divide for the heel which you would do in any sock and they tell you how to do a patterned heel and then it goes right to the turn heel well what happened to the flap? you have to read further down where it says shape your gussets so they also wanted me to uh, to divide the heel so that there was a different number of stitches in the front of the sock than was in the back of the sock. Well, I ain't got time for that. So, with my scraps and my US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, I put together this. Now, I've started to uh, stripe two rows of each color on the heel here and the only thing that's goofing me up at this point is that there is black in here and it shows up not really a lot I can see it better anyway let me see if I can shove it in here First of all, let me just say how I'm adoring how this is looking here. Love it! And I started on my heel flap. And so this is such a quick, fast knit. And I don't know if anybody knows, I have a really hard time making plain vanilla socks. They take me forever because they're boring, frankly. And even with self-striping yarn, they don't excite me so I always head for socks that are two or three colors whatever I happen to have laying around and so I have my books stored my patterns stored in loose leaf I don't have it here close by but I keep them in loose leaf books and one day I was looking for a, a particular pattern and I opened up the loose leaf book and found so many patterns so many that I hadn't seen in years. I was like, I'm making everything in this book. And I took it upstairs to my bedroom. So this was one of them. So yeah, I'm altering the pattern, which is my prerogative since it's my yarn. And I'm only going to work to make stuff that I actually want and will use. I'm not making stuff to give away anymore. I'm making it for myself. And if I happen to feel when I'm done making a thing that I want to give it away, then that's my prerogative. But for now, I'm keeping everything. So this is the pair of socks I'm making. I should hopefully be done by the next time I podcast. So I'm very, very, very happy with my choice here. So... There is one last thing. My son was shopping for a gift for my mom who just had a birthday. And while he was shopping, he thought about me, which I thought was very nice. He's always asking me, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Mother's Day? And I always tell him every year, anything that says mom world's number one mom, world's best mom, you're the greatest mom. And so he never does that. He never gets me anything that says that. But this time, when he got back from shopping for my mom, he came home with this mug. What? So you're seeing it on this side, and I'm seeing it on this side. And the only thing that would have made this a better, better, better gift is if he had written love you always and signed his name what I was so freaked out I did a happy dance now not so unusual because I do the happy dance when my son takes the garbage out which is almost never no not almost never which is never and um, I do the happy dance when he cleans his room or cleans the bathroom so I'm happy, happy, happy with my new mug. So that's it for today. Um, I hope to be back on a regular schedule because I'm using the blog 
to balance me out so I can at least have some kind of show notes. The show notes go in the Ravelry group as well. So I'm hoping this kind of makes even things out for people who watch. So you don't get so discouraged when I don't show up on time, which is like my norm. So I'll put the links to everything in the show notes. And I will see you when I get back. And really, if you're a new viewer, thanks for checking me out. I hope there's something here that you enjoyed. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> you know how it is. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you so much. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you're viewing this podcast for the first time, feel free to subscribe and just see what's going on. My content is mostly knitting and spinning. Um, I do have some crochet ideas, but they aren't solid yet. So, <coughs> excuse me. I will keep you informed either in a Ravelry group, Moms with Yarn, or on the blog. So, until I see you next time, Enjoy your day. Happy knitting.